Hello guys, how are you doing today? I'm going to be talking about how the airplane has to fly through winds coming from four different directions. We have easterly and westerly winds as well as winds that go up and down. A lot of globe believers, they keep on sending me links of videos demonstrating that automatic pilot is adjusting the plane that due to the curvature of the earth and we will see here today that this is not the case. The airplane is making adjustments because it's flying through an atmosphere that it's a pretty active atmosphere with the winds going on both directions from east to west, from west to east, as well as winds that go from the bottom up and from the top down, as we're gonna watch in this video right now. An area of low pressure means that we have air that is converging at the surface and then rising aloft and then diverging aloft higher up in the atmosphere. High pressure and that's when the air is sinking. We have convergence of air aloft and then divergence of air at the surface. And so whenever we look at high pressure, that's the atmosphere that is pushing air down it is increasing the pressure at the surface. So think of a scale. If you were to just take a scale and put it on the floor and put nothing on it, it would read zero. But as soon as you put your weight on the scale, the meter goes up. So it's the same idea when we measure atmospheric pressure, especially at the surface. Here, pressure is sinking or it's being pushed down onto the earth. That is what creates high pressure. And it's the opposite effect with low pressure when we have low pressure, that's because air is converging at the surface and then rising aloft. So air is not being pushed down, it's actually doing the opposite, it's rising upwards. So when we talk about converging air and diverging air, and we actually look at it in a vertical aspect, here you can see that if the jet stream winds are highlighted in these blue arrows, that means that when the winds are converging aloft, they're diverging at the surface, creating high pressure areas at the surface and then when they're diverging aloft that's because they're converging at the surface so that creates an area of relatively low pressure as we watch it in on this video we see that the airplane let's say here this is the altitude in thousands of feet of an airplane flying at 40,000 feet it's going, all is going through winds that are blowing either from the bottom, from the ground up, and from the top down. So those airplanes that are flying through those wind currents has, uh, have to adjust its altitude accordingly. Those numbers keep showing negative numbers and positive numbers because it's always adjusting uh, according to the the direction of the wind. Look at here, convergent air pushing the airplane up. So to maintain its level, let's say at 39,000 feet, the autopilot has to adjust the plane. And then over here, when the airplane is flying through divergent winds, the same thing, the wind, the winds is, the wind is pushing the airplane down. So the autopilot has to adjust the altitude of the plane. The autopilot is constantly adjusting the plane, not because due of a curvature that does not exist, but because the airplane is flying through strong winds that will affect the altitude of the plane. Here one more example of the uplift due to the convergent air winds and the same thing here, the divergent winds bringing the airplane down. So when an airplane is flying through the air, it's going through those uh, different kind of winds, not only from top to bottom, as we see here in the beginning, from a uh, bottom to the top or from the top down is the airplane adjusting, but also from winds coming from east to west, as we're gonna see now. As we see in this animation, the airplane is going from one side of the flatter to the other. Right now, winds are blowing from west to east, so the airplane is adjusting to the left. Now, the airplane is flying through winds blowing from east to west, so the airplane is pushed to the east. 
at this point, the airplane is again flying through winds coming from west to east, so it makes adjustments to the west. I want to thank Joe Gallion for making this animation based on the weather patterns in 2019. Right now, the airplane is adjusting to the right because it's being pushed to the left because of the winds. Right now, the airplane is adjusting to the west because the, the wind is coming from the west to the east, and so the autopilot has to adjust. And finally here, one more time, the airplane is adjusting to east because it's being pushed to the west because of the winds. If the autopilot was really adjusting to only because of a supposed curvature of the earth, the numbers should be always negative because it would be a constant dive. Every mile, actually, the airplane should be adjusting down because of the supposed curvature of the Earth. It would be pretty similar to this uh, curvature formula here. The airplane should have to adjust constantly, dipping down the nose, so that means the number on the altimeter would be always negative, not, not, never positive. But on the contrary, with the numbers on the altimeter is always negative and affirmative, which means the airplane is only adjusting for the pressure, air pressure. It has nothing to do with the curvature of the earth. It's only adjusting because of the air pressure caused by these winds, the divergent winds and convergent winds that is pushing the airplane up and down, uplift and subsidence. So the airplane has to constantly be adjusting as mentor pilot explains in this short video. Uh, the atmosphere essentially looks like, uh, it looks pretty much like, you know, the surface of the, um, of the earth where you have high mountains and deep valleys. In the case of the atmosphere, those mountains and valleys are high pressures or low pressures. Uh, the atmosphere essentially looks like uh, it looks pretty much like, you know, the surface of the um, of the Earth, where you have high mountains and deep valleys. In the case of the atmosphere, those mountains and valleys are high pressures or low pressures. So there are many other kinds of winds that we're going to talk about right now, and all of them influence the flights, and so those adjustments has to be made constantly as the airplane goes through those different weather patterns. Here you see the rotor kind of wind and caused by, you know, the topography of Earth. So uh, airplanes go through those and have to make adjustments. And here we have more winds that changing uh, positions, changing its course due to the uh, topography and causes turbulence and that can affect the airplane greatly from uh, small bumps to terrible accidents as it has been recorded in history. We also have microbursts. We studied this in our Aviation English Chapter 10 and many accidents have occurred because of those microbursts in, in lower altitude. So all those affect the flight. So as a bonus, I have here a very interesting interview. Uh, some globe believers in Brazil, believing they could debunk Flat Earth, brought in a mechanic from Latin Airlines. Latin is a South American airline. Uh, it's a company from Brazil and Chile. So they fly to Sydney. So these globe believers brought into their program a mechanic from Latin because they wanted to debunk Flat Earth and it backfired. The pilot, I mean the mechanic, was not defending Flat Earth. He was just there to answer the questions and he backfired greatly because all his answers favored the Flat Earth model. So the show took two hours long. I select only three points that I found it very interesting. I have added the subtitles here, so I want you guys to go ahead and look at these three points. The three points I selected from this two hours long interview are these, the autonomy of the flights and 
Chicago to Sydney, the Globe believers were questioning that uh, an airplane cannot fly all the way from Santiago to Chile the way it's designed. So the mechanic gives a very important information. And two, adjusting for curvature, which is what we just discussed in this video. And three, planes flying at the speed of sound. So let's go ahead and listen. Please pay attention on the subtitles. So he's referring to this Air Airbus, which was acquired by the Brazilian president, and has it's being adapted. It's called ER Extended Range. It's been adapted with extra tanks to allow a, a, a greater autonomy. I mean, he, he even said that that plane can fly all the way from Brazil to Japan. It's a, it's uh, adapted to that. So he's saying that those airplanes, Latin airplanes flying from Santiago to Sydney, have probably been adapted uh, with this extended range capability. Let's listen to the next one. So the guy who sent me this video I was even laughing because he just destroyed this globe believer's argument. He's just saying that, you know, a pilot flies as if he's flying on a flat plane. There's no telling, no pilot can say he's flying over a ball when he's flying an airplane. That's basically what he's saying. The whole time you fly level. You don't fly a plane saying I'm flying over a ball. And the next one, he talks about the speed of the sound. So let's go ahead and listen to this. Hi, the guy is laughing again because uh, basically what he's saying is that he, the guy, the globe believers were saying that an airplane cannot fly at the speed of sound and he said, the mechanic said, no, they can, he can. There are three kinds of speed and uh, he did not go against that argument made by us flat earthers that uh, commercial airplanes can and do fly at the speed of sound as it's been recorded so many times. I end this video here saying that there are many evidence that these altitude adjustments and compensations done by the autopilot are due to atmospheric conditions, weather and wind patterns and loss of weight of the aircraft as it burns fuel. There is absolutely zero evidence these adjustments are made due to a supposed curvature of the Earth. Airplanes fly over a plane. The Earth is flat. Thank you guys. See you next time. Take care and bye-bye.